A few months back, we came across a YouTube video titled Overview of Stretchable Arduinos Embedded in Soft Robotics by the Fabratory at Yale University, and it showed a generalized method of embedding two-layer circuits into soft, stretchable forms. But what really caught our eye was when some SparkFun Red showed up alongside some other common open source electronics. Now, in our continued effort here at SparkFun to live lives of joyous curiosity, we wanted to know more. So we reached out to one of the researchers, Stephanie Woodman, a PhD student and NASA fellow, to learn more about this crazy, wild, futuristic world of soft robots. Hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much for taking the time today to chat with us. Yeah. Um, can you just give us a brief introduction? Tell us who you are and where you're currently doing your research. Yeah, I'm uh, Stephanie Woodman. I've been at Yale for five years getting my PhD done with Rebecca Kramer Battaglio in the Fabratory. Nice. Very cool. And the Fabratory is where you're doing all your work? Yeah, that's the name of our lab inside the mechanical Excellent. engineering department. <laughs> I love that. Great. So I, I don't like to assume that everybody knows everything that's going on in the world of robotics. I know I sure don't. So could you just give us a, a quick overview, explain soft or stretchable robotics? Yeah, yeah. So in some ways, in a lot of ways, it's exactly what it sounds like. So robots made with um, soft and stretchable materials, either in part or in full. I think a lot of the research goals are, hey, if we can make the, the whole robot soft, every component of the robot, the computation, the sensing, the uh, actuation soft, then that would be kind of like the pinnacle. Not that it would be purely necessary, at least in the current applications that I think of, but if we could do that, then we would have overcome a lot of challenges um, that we want to solve in the real world, like wearables, surgical applications, um, safe human-robot interaction, that kind of thing. Great. And I mean, with humans being 85% soft and humanoid robots being such a force right now in the industry, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely where the inspiration came from, um, from biological creatures. So like octopi can do all these amazing tasks underwater, open jars, squeeze through small spaces. And we think if our robots can do a similar thing, they'll have attained a lot of functionality from the current examples. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. So I guess this kind of leads off of that. Why, why did you start working on stretchable electronics? What was, what was your interest in the field initially? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a lot of the field of soft robotics, um, at least at its inception, has uh, focused on soft actuation. So using bladders to make robots move um, and even more recently into soft sensing with different um, stretchable conductors. And so a lot of people were like, yeah, we have these stretchable conductors. Why don't we just make the robot brains, the computation soft? Um, and this was inspiring to me, and there's a lot of the great body of literature that tries to accomplish this. Um, and what I always kind of thought was missing, I was like, great, well, we have all these amazing open access circuits, right? That, that people use in hobbyist robotics and real robotics, all the, not that one is less real, <laughs> um, and uh, industry robotics all the time. Um, but why don't we, see that applied. There's no like, hey, you made a soft robot, put a soft Arduino on it. And so I kind of wanted to get at this problem a little bit and along the way kind of tackle some existing manufacturing challenges related to making these uh, soft electronics. Excellent. Very cool. So what are some of these uh, challenges, some of the obstacles that you're facing? Um, what are the problems you're currently working on? Yeah. Um, and, and the problems that we tried to tackle in the paper as well. So um, these stretchable electronics, at least the ones that I'm working on, are imagine you have kind of an Arduino or SparkFun board, but you've made the substrate stretchable. So we're not making stretchable transistors uh, or anything like that. Like we, we use the uh, integrated circuit chips and we use, um, you know, service mount resistors and things. Um, and we just make the board soft. And that creates challenges because uh, the interface between this super soft substrate and then, of course, these rigid uh, circuit components um, is oftentimes a point of failure. And so we um, worked, especially in this paper and, and in current and future work to mitigate that interface and kind of reduce the, the stress that concentrates between the rigid component and the stretchable trace um, being the substrate or the, the stretchable conductor. All the interfaces around that are extremely important. Cool. So yeah, I know when we create a board here, our traces are straight lines. What's the most efficient? What's going to lay out? Are you using zigzags or something like that to give it the ability to stretch, to move? No, we actually use uh, liquid conductors. And so it's oh, nice, nice 
about, uh, or liquid or pasty conductors. Um, and so they're based on liquid metals. So I know when people think of that, they immediately think mercury and they're like, oh, it's toxic. We use a very different uh, non-toxic version of a, a metal that's liquid at room temperature. Um, and we kind of stir it in air and it reacts with, with oxygen to create this paste, which is actually, you can paint it on like, like with a paintbrush. Um, and so we pattern it um, using a mask. And so we paint it over this mask and peel it away. And so we don't have to use, um, it's not like geometric patterned copper. We use the same trace layout. Oftentimes it's in the open access version of these uh, or open source version of these circuits. Um, and just use a, a the stretchable um, and liquid conductor that we've manufactured. Very, very cool. I'm glad you're manufacturing. I've worked with uh, conductive paints before and yeah. find that they're great and they're so cool. But then after about a year, year and a half, they're all dried out and they start to lose conductivity. Yeah. So yeah, these are um, like the shelf life actually is wonderful. I, I, I can make a batch and two years later, you know, I am still using the same one if I haven't gone through it at a rapid pace. So. Okay, now I want some of this. We'll talk later, but <laughs> <Yeah>. moving on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, looking at challenges or obstacles to the final product, uh, the final goal of mm -hmm. what do you, is it the electronics, the chips and sensors and things like that? Or is it more the substrate that you're fi finding to be more challenging? Yeah, it's the interfacing. So I think there are a couple of different, uh, I guess, two different sects of stretchable electronics. There are researchers working on making soft transistors, making like, so instead of um, the stretchable board with rigid electronics, they're making, you know, we want to make the whole thing soft. Um, but due to just, we have so, there's so many transistors in every <laughs> uh, chip that we use. Um, like the current the current designs can be spatially inefficient. So to maintain the current computational density, we want to use ideally the, the same IC components that we're using in kind of state of the art electronics. And so I'd say the challenges are mostly with the interfacing, getting something that um, effectively mitigates that um, that stress concentration at the interface. And so the materials we have are good. I think we're gonna have to look into methods of adhesion, maybe even like substrates that vary their stiffness throughout the material. So it's really stiff under an electronic component and it kind of becomes more soft. Um, and so something like that kind of design um, all together, so. I love every bit of this coming from more of a, a Mechie background than an EE background. And moving over, I love I love every bit of what you're saying here. This is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course. So, we need <laughs> so you've published all this on in GitHub, which is great. Thank you yeah. for that. We really appreciate it. But just could you walk us through the main stages of it? Yeah, yeah. And so I think I have a couple of different unique terms here. Um, but as far as well, you have to acquire the correct materials. So if you want to make an Arduino Pro Mini, um, what I did was I bought an Arduino Pro Mini and I harvested the components off of it because um, they're already bootloaded and things. Um, and then I you, you, I'd use a stretchable tape VHB most commonly, um, but take, you know, whatever stretchable substrate you want. And we also tested a couple of um, elastomer dragon skin type varieties. Um, and you sandwich that super thin piece of stretchable substrate between two pieces of um, sticker paper. And so it's kind of like the backing of a sticker because what uh, we found is that the adhesion between the electronic component and the substrate was really important. But of course, if we just use paper as our mask, it would just stick to it permanently. So something that can be removed. Um, and then you pattern um, with a laser, you cut through holes through it. So wherever you want a vertical, vertical interconnect access, you put that hole there. And that also cuts your board outline. Um, and then you put it in a laser to cut the traces on the, the bottom mask. Um, so not through the whole thing, just on the top. And you take it, flip it, and you cut the traces in the top mask. Um, and then starting with the bottom, you um, peel off where you want the conductive traces to be. Um, paint on your material, uh, encapsulate it, flip it, do the same exact thing. Um, but before you encapsulate it, put on all of your electronic components um, and attach your wires. Very so, cool. Yeah. Screen printing yeah. process. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Great. So it seems like one of the major aspects of this research is to make the process accessible and reproducible, repeatable. Yeah. And 
and that's why you're using open source schematics and eagle files and things like that i assume yeah. and why then uh, is that the same reason for spark fun and other yeah. similar open source boards yeah i mean spark the arduino pro mini is just such a uh versatile board that I had used that a lot of people in my lab had used. And so that's kind of where it all started. And I knew the process was generalizable. So I was like, I need to pick some more open source <laughs> circuits. And I I just ended up choosing SparkFun circuits because they have good demonstration. They're all open source and super functional. So yeah, and you know, we love that here. And you know, we're big open source people. Yeah. And and we love to see what people do with our stuff, but we really love it when people are doing open source stuff with our open source stuff so that changes keep going because yeah. you know, I, I'm sure as you know, you know, we can think of a thousand things to do with each of our products, but you put that out to a million people and they're each gonna think of a thousand other things and it just yeah. progresses, it advances it so much quicker. Yeah, absolutely. The um that's why the the GitHub I think will be an important place because I put all of my circuit designs on there and you know bill of materials, you know, and SOP, how to do everything. And I'm hoping people will adapt the process, add their own build files, add their own demonstrations. So it's exciting. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. So what is what does the future of soft robotics look like? I know for me, I've spent my life as an athlete and a dancer, and I've had a lot of injuries and gone through a lot of PT. And there would have been a great time when it was be like, oh, okay, I can now bend this to 90, to 110, to 115. Is that kind of the idea here? For soft robotics? Yeah, I think there are a lot of far term applications. Um, but some of the near term applications, um, well, some are already happening. Like there, there are soft robotic grippers on factory floors because they're so gentle they can pick up tomatoes, they can without hurting them, they can manipulate other things. I think we'll see them, um, those similar type grippers in um agriculture as well. Um, but yes, of course, a huge space is wearable robotics. One of my demonstrations was having the circuit and also a, a soft sensor directly on the elbow. And I think there's huge potential for sensing things about your body, about diagnosing, about maintaining health, about getting better quality health care that uh, soft robotics makes accessible. Um, and of course, surgical robotics as well. So this is already already being used, um, soft robots for um, <laughs> less invasive surgery and farther applications or even drug delivery. So, nice. yeah. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. So soft robotics, very cool. Um, where can people go to learn more about it? Do you have book recommendations, research article recommendations, white papers that you can share? So a couple that I really, I just actually wrote a research, art, a, re, a review article, excuse me, that gets at a little bit of this, the state of the art of stretchable computation is. And so it attacks that, it attacks that in kind of a larger context of what I want to accomplish, which is shape changing robots. And so this is a, that's much farther down the line, but of course, a necessary part of that will be stretchable sensing and stretchable computation, which I review in that paper. Um, and then there are a couple other great review articles um, that you have the link to about soft robotics in general. Um, and I would honestly like look it up on YouTube. There's some really cool videos out there on soft robotics, um, wearable robotics, um, energy harvesting and uh, devices for use on the human body. So it's it's a rapidly exploding space and there's so much to learn. It is, it's, it's coming at us fast. And and I love that you just casually throw out, yes, I just wrote a review on a piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good, it just, it, it's a preprint that's now available. It'll be official in May. Um, Excellent. But as far as like stretch the presentation, yeah, yeah. Putting that good. Well, man, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time with us, for sharing your insight and your knowledge yeah. and your research. and. I know I'm not the only one. I know there are tons of folks out there that are going to be really excited to hear about this and read about it and learn about it. Yeah, so thank I'm, you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to interview me. I'm so excited that you get to put this out to the world. <laughs> oh, man, me too. Um, and thank you for everybody who joined us. And man, learn more. Soft Robotics. Stephanie Woodman, Yale <laughs> University, where I'm from. Thank you. And we'll see you guys in the next one.